Good day, brethren in the Lord, friends who are watching this video. Have a blessed day to all of you. It is my prayer that as we continue to study God's Word, we will not just be a hearer of the Word, but a doer of His instruction. And uh, we will obey immediately whatever the Lord has commanded us to do. In my last sermon, we learned about the worthlessness of wealth. Actually, we are in chapter 5 in our study in the book of James. And we are now in verses 7 to 12. Again, we learned in my previous sermon about the worthlessness of wealth and the warning of James against injustice treatment to the workers. Fortunate people must not trust on their wealth and learn to put their trust in the Lord. Apostle James allotted verses in the last chapter of his book or letter to encourage those suffering and are oppressed that they bear without murmuring and without resistance. And Apostle James instructed the oppressed worker to have confidence in God. James instructed these oppressed believers to be patient. In verse 7, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. When James instructed these oppressed to be patient, what he commanded them to do is to refuse to react with anger. James wants these exploited workers to wait for the Lord's punishment or destruction to the rich, wicked men. The oppressed must be patient and wait for the judgment of the Lord. I have mentioned in my previous sermon the meaning of Lord Sabaoth in verse 4 on this chapter. Adam Clark said, and I quote, Lord of hosts or Lord of armies is a frequent title of God in the Old Testament and signifies his uncontrollable power and the infinitely numerous means he has for governing the world, defending his followers and punishing the wicked. In other words, the Lord Sabaoth has all the means to govern the world, to defend his follower or defend his people and punishes the wicked. The Lord has heard the cry of the oppressed and in this statement and description of our Lord Sabaoth alone, we are already assured of the certainty of the wicked or certainty of the wicked rich man's destruction and punishment. But as they wait for the Lord to finally punish that wicked rich man, the suffering and oppressed must wait actively. This is very important, that they must wait actively on the Lord. Meaning, while they wait on the Lord, they need to work for the advancement of God's kingdom. It says, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. But what kind of waiting does James suggest here? I mentioned in chapter 1 that each Christian must have active faith as we wait patiently on the Lord and as we endure the sufferings that we face each day. Apostle James used the farmer as an illustration on how we should be patient in Sundervan's life application, it commented and said, The farmer must wait patiently for his crops to grow. He cannot hurry the process, 
but he does not take the summer off the hope that all goes well in the fields. There is much work to do to ensure a good harvest. In the same way, we must wait patiently for Christ's return. We cannot make him come back any sooner. But while we wait, there is much work that we can do to advance God's kingdom. Both the farmer and the Christian must live by faith, looking toward the future reward for their labors. Don't live as if Christ will never come again. Work faithfully to build his kingdom. The king will come when the time is right. End of quote. It is pretty much obvious how churches and their services suddenly went on halt or on hold. Our usual Sunday schedule of going to church to corporately worship and praise God, praying together, giving of our tithes and offering, small group meetings and fellowships were replaced with being and staying at home the whole day. Suddenly, Christians were not allowed to gather in church to maintain social and uh, physical distancing. We must uh, admit it. We were not used of holding a family worship on a Sunday at home. And it is observable that for a while, we were stuck in a dilemma on how to continue with our ministries amidst this crisis. Most went online, but it seems we are no longer that prepared or in the mood and mode for our Zoom or Facebook Live Sunday worship. To give us a wider picture of our present circumstance, tithes and offerings decreased because we ourselves are victims at home. So we, so we became more busy doing things to become productive. Then in our busyness, we forgot to pray and read God's word. We can no longer do the ministry. So we stopped sharing the gospel. Discipleship and evangelism seemed to have been neglected. When the normal routine and setup of being a Christian was stripped off, we stop being Christians. Because of the circumstance we are in right now, we saw it a chance to be lax in doing our duties and responsibilities rather than continuing on in our pursuit to grow more in our vertical and horizontal relationships. We already had a way out to becoming the Christians we were supposed to be. We literally embraced staying at home to the point of hiding our light in our own homes. Since we can no longer do what we used to do before to practice Christianity, we just went with the flow and just wait when everything goes back to normal. It seems that the only thing that could stop us from our passion and enthusiasm in serving God is this deadly virus. I am not suggesting that we go for a suicide mission, but what I am trying to point out is Christian must exercise their faith in this time of pandemic. Each believer must possess and exercise an active faith in our sufferings and hardships. If all of us will become passive Christians, our church will die. We need to work to advance God's kingdom or to advance the kingdom of God. And to tell you honestly, I cannot do it alone. We need each other to propagate the gospel of the Lord Jesus. We need to fulfill our mission here on earth. 
Again, I want us to be reminded that we are not of this world. Our citizenship is up there in heaven. As we exercise patience, we must have an established hearts and must not have grumbling spirits. Verse 8, you also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. What's the importance of having an established heart? Now, the coming of the Lord requires that we must have an established hearts. Hearts that are rooted in Jesus. Matthew Paul said, Let your hearts be steadfast in faith and constant in holiness, encouraging yourselves to both by the coming of the Lord. Be patient, strengthen your hearts, by considering that your sufferings will not be long. For the coming of the Lord to destroy your persecutors is near. James encourages the oppressed to keep on serving the Lord and be steadfast in all that they do. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. The destruction of the ungodly rich men and the redemption from their suffering is near. Struggles, tragedies, oppression, and crisis are all external challenges that the world are constantly throwing at us. I mean, it's totally true. The world is never getting any better. And we should be expecting worst from worst scenarios every day and even all year round. Scientists, and our excellent doctors have not even come up with the most effective and reliable vaccines for COVID-19. And the news have been spreading worldwide that there yet again are rising viruses that may as well be pandemic in tendencies. Plagues, second and the third wave in certain countries and the not getting better climate change are just a few of what our present earth has been going through. Some of us may have really been affected economically. Some are not amenable with how our or how politics work. The worst is instead of showing kindness to others, we become or we became socially distant. Brethren in the Lord, when we focus too much on what is going on with the world, we, only, we will only be disappointed and depressed. When we focus on circumstances, we will only run out of reasons to live and move forward. When we focus on our present sufferings and pains, we will lose strength and hope to advance God's kingdom. Our hearts are truly deceitful and we cannot trust it. But when we establish and strengthen our hearts with God's truth and promises, no oppression or suffering can ever break us. Let God rule in your hearts. Let it be grounded in his word. Let it, let it be secured and peaceful with God's love. So whatever this wicked world throw at us, we are unbreakable because we are steadfast on God. Verse 9, Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. It is in our innate being to complain and blame others when things will not go on our way. Yes, when we are in trouble, hardships, trials, or problems, we will find someone whom we can put our blame. Naalala ko nung nag-declare ng total lockdown ang ating pamahalaan. Marami ang, mga, marami ang nag-post sa Facebook, marami ang nagreklamo kung papaano sila makasurvive sa buhay kung hindi sila papayagang lumabas upang magtrabaho. And then, 
nung nag-anunsyo naman ang ating pamalaan na bumalik na sa mga kanikanilang mga trabaho, marami pa rin ang nagreklamo. Parang walang mapupuntahan ang ating bansa sa ating mga ugali. And it is also the same. Minsan ganun din tayo sa ating Panginoon. Magre-reklamo tayo dahil mainit. And kung umulan naman, magre-reklamo din tayo. We only think of ourselves. And most of the time, we don't want to own our share of responsibility in our actions. David Gozek said, Times of hardship can cause us to be less than loving with our Christian brothers and sisters. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. When the apostle or when Apostle James used the prophets as an example of patience, he does not mean that we, that we watch how the prophets are patient in their service and work for the Lord. But the apostle James here instructed the oppressed or even us to imitate the trait the prophet displayed. They did not only display their patience, but in their suffering, the prophets endure in their hardships. Apostle James encourages the oppressed to exercise patience like how the prophets exercise patience in their sufferings and endure the hardships. You know, in general, the prophets were the most, someone said, the prophets were the most persecuted race of men. If you try to study history, you will notice that most prophets died a very pain, painful death and lived a very persecuted life. Yet, they displayed a good example on how to be patient and endure hardships in life. Some of us experiences hardships. Yes, I think everyone. Hardships, trials, and troubles. Maybe emotionally we are troubled, financially struggling, mentally tired, and spiritually dying. Minsan naisip natin na wala pang ibang tao na nakakaranas or dumaan sa mga pinagdadaanan ko sa buhay. You are hopeless and helpless. Brothers and sisters in the Lord and friends, kung anuman ang pinagdadaanan mo sa buhay ngayon, sigurado ako na nadaanan na din ito ng mga nauna sa atin. What we can learn from this, from this passage or from this scripture is, we need to endure the hardships and be patient in our suffering. He said, for blessed are those who remained steadfast like the steadfastness of Job. Job lost his wealth, children, and his health. It is so easy to lose heart when everything we have vanished. But Job's example for us is something we need to ponder and imitate. What he has gone through was not easy, and I know that when that type of suffering strike us, we will question God's sovereignty. Sasabihin agad natin, Lord, bakit ako? Bakit hindi sila? But the encouragement for us here is to be patient in what we are going through and endure this pandemic and crisis. He said in verse 11, and you have seen what the Lord has accomplished, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. The Lord, in the end of Job's affliction, blessed him with twice as much as he had before, because he patiently endured. Verse 12, But above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. If you look at this verse, 
it seems that there is no connection from the previous verse. But Apostle James wants to tell the believers during the time to stop swearing or making an oath. David Gosek commented and said, James again echoed the teaching of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. The need to swear or make oaths beyond a simple and clear yes or no betrays the weakness of one's word. It demonstrates that there is not enough weight in one's own character to confirm their words. Brethren, this admonition may seem out of context to us. Yet, probably, James jotted it down as an afterthought to emphasize the warning of James 5 verse 9 that in excitement or irritation, there, there was a temptation to curse and swear violently and profanely. So, again, we still go back to the first admonition in verse 7. It says, be patient. Refuse to react with anger and never give in to the temptation to cause you to curse and swear. In conclusion, exercise patience in your sufferings and endure hardships the Lord allowed us to go through. We must always look on the bright side of what is happening to us. God has something for us. That is why He allowed it to happen. How we may apply it or how we can apply this truth in our lives. Number one, practice patience. It is commanded for us to be patient. Number two, persevere in hardships. And number three, preserve your testimony. This is very important lesson for us this morning. Is I want us to discuss this question in our small groups. In what aspect of your life right now wherein you need to exercise patience? I know that we are struggling right now with what is happening around us. But then again, we are reminded to be patient. It is my prayer that we will not just be a hearer of the word, but a doer of God's command and loss. Brethren, stay at home, stay safe, and stay fit. God bless.